What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to another recap episode, ladies and gentlemen. We had a nine-game slate, and though I didn't watch all nine, like, literally, as I'm recording this, the Phoenix Suns are playing over here. They are by 20 and, and a half time. I don't really have anything to say about that, so we're just going to talk about all the other things we saw. Leave a like, subscribe, but let's get into today's sponsor. And y'all know the sponsor is, of course, Price Picks. They've been a presenting sponsor of this channel for the entire season. Be sure to hit that link in the description, download the Price Picks app, and use code Kenny because you're matching up to a $100 deposit for all new players. Price Picks has been one of the most exciting things about this NBA season because it's me versus the numbers. So since we had nine games on today, I was heavily invested, so I put together two different lineups. Let me show you how they did. Five Five pick flex play. Jay Shante hit his over on assist. Reese hit his over on assist. Jared Allen hit his over on points. Grayson Matthews over on points and he killed it. And Jared Vanderbilt was just two rebounds away from getting over. But since this was a flex play, I only needed four things to hit. So I was in the green. Number two, another flex play. Kevin Durant assists over. Chris Middleton needed one more assist for, th for this to be a perfect five for five. But Freddie, Karis LeVert, and De'Aaron Fox all came through for me today. Again, it's just you versus the numbers, but you do have help. You can join the Discord server with all the other people that are playing prize picks and they throw picks they help you put together the perfect lineup for yourself and i really really recommend all y'all to hit that link in the description download the app and use code kenny because again they're matching up to a hundred dollar deposit for all new players it's so many people in the kenny for real universe that are already tweeting at me their picks and their hits and everything just join in i think i want to start today's episode talking about the dallas mavericks because if you didn't know they went into indiana and lost to the pacers shout out to the pacers they decided they want to blow things up and they ain't lost a game since it's kind of crazy crazy how things like that can work. Karis Avert, names and trade rumors, and he's been killing it. I showed you my prize picks. I took the over, and he hit that, 26 points. I love the transparency that we're getting from Miles Turner in his interviews. Earlier, he was talking about how he wants to be more than just sit in the corner. He loves the monster bonus, but he believes in himself. He believes they could be better, uh, a bigger role in different places, which I, I respect. And today, he kind of showcased some of that 17 points, 10 rebounds. He did more than just shoot threes, which is good for him, um, and ended up winning the game. Shout out to him. But I really want to focus on the Dallas Mavericks and their struggle so far this season, man. This is a team that was just in the playoffs that was taking um, uh, the Clippers to a long series with Porzingis going down an injury. Like, this is a team that had pretty decent expectations coming into the season, and so far, they have been well under them. Now, some people did see this coming because they didn't make any change to the roster, no significant change to the roster. And me, I did see this coming, but it started off the season... 12 and 13 and very early on in the season we we were talking about how they're one of the worst good teams in the league they beat up on the bad teams but once they go against real competition they struggle today they could not shoot the ball and that is just not a today thing like we got mark cuban going on to twitter you know making tweets about the change in the ball and how much that's impacting his players and, and having them shoot so terrible today these boys shot 13.8 percent from three 13.8% from three is ridiculous. And you're like, Kenny, that's a one-time occurrence. Teams have bad nights. This is not a one-time occurrence for the Dallas Mavericks. Just the other day on National TV against the Brooklyn Nets, they shot 19% from three. This happens over and over and over for them. And there's been a lot of criticism for, for Luka Doncic this season, right? He came into this year out of shape, and we're a quarter of the way through the season. He still doesn't look like completely himself. Even late in this game, he twisted his ankle, and I don't know what the heck is going on with that because he just came back from an ankle thing. But him being out of shape and him coming in bigger than what he normally is is not the sole reason why the Dallas Mavericks are bad right now. I look at this roster and I try to think to myself, what could they do to continue to build around what might be a generational player in Luka Doncic for him to get a championship? And they don't have draft picks left. They don't have any draft picks left. They don't have a ton of assets to go in and buy in. I don't know what the Dallas Mavericks do from this point on to get to a championship quality team in a year or two down the line. I don't know what, I don't know what it is. And again... When you have a player like Luka, who might be generational, who showed that he could be generational, you want to be able to build a team around him. I know he is still young and he just signed an extension, but you still want to continue to put pieces around him for them to be successful. And right now you're, you're seeing that the pieces around him aren't good. Reggie Bullock played 20 minutes, didn't hit a shot. And that's kind of been a consensus for Reggie Bullock this entire season. He ain't been able to hit nothing. During Finney Smith, though he only had four points today, he has been your best shooter. That's a problem. And I like Dorothy Smith. He's a solid, really good role player. I would love to have him in Chicago, low key. But he should never be the best shooter on the court. <laughs> Ever. That's a problem that they're dealing with. And I don't know what the solution is. All right, let's talk about number two. Game number two of the day. 
for me, was the Cavaliers beating the Minnesota Timberwolves. This was basically a 30-point win. I don't care what the final box score says. This was a 30-pointer where they pulled the starters pretty early on. Jared Allen only had to play 26 minutes. Evan Mobley, 24. Larry Market at 21. This was a legit blowout, blowout. But I guess the third stringers of the Minnesota Timberwolves are goaded, and they made this look respectable. It was not. This is a very, very bad loss for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So you're like, Kenny, why are you talking about this 30-point win? But I just saw something on Reddit before I hit record that is incredible that made me really want to talk about the Cavs more. Y'all know I've been back in the Cavs all season long. And I think in the video where I was talking about every single team for a minute, that was like a few weeks ago, the Cavs are in a rut. Colin Sexton had just got announced he was done for the season. Evan Mobley had held, hurt his elbow, and they were starting to slide. I think at one point they got to like a five-game loser streak. But since Evan Mobley has been back in the lineup, they have been incredible. They are 15-8 and eight when Mobley is in the lineup. That is a rookie caliber player. And, and we already we legitimately have a conversation trying to figure out if Evan Mobley deserves to be an all-defensive player. And he has a real life, he has a real life case to be an all-defensive player as a rookie. And all the other players that have made an all-defensive team as a rookie. Let me read you these five players that have done it so far. David Robinson, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Tim Duncan. Hakeem Olajuwon and Manu Bo, who is a kind of an outlier, but you know Manu Bo blocked every shot he ever seen. So, but the four out of these five dudes are legendary players. Now, of course, we're jumping the gun. I think last episode we made a joke about Evan Mobley being generational. Regardless, this team is not just a team that you look at, oh, the young core, they're going to be good in a couple years. These guys are good right now. Kevin Love, in just a season's time, went from a dude that was turning the ball over on purpose because he was frustrated to being able to come off the bench and play his role. He was in Minnesota today, so I kind of expected him to have a big game, and he did off the bench because that's where it started off, Minnesota. But the Cavs, again, are a team that I really, really enjoy watching. I ain't even mentioned the name Darius Garland, and I could have made seven tweets today about Darius Garland and his one-handed passes, his alley-oops, or his logo three that he hit. And it's a real conversation trying to figure out which one of the two players between Jared Allen and, and Darius Garland deserve to be an all-star this year because the way they're playing right now, in my mind, they, they, they should get an all-star. It might be uh, J.A. or it might be Darius Garland. I don't really know. That just felt weird to say. Do people call him J.A.? I'm not going to do that. That's that that's J.A. just doesn't know. Is it going to be the Fro or Darius Garland? That's better. All right, man, let's talk about this Hornets-Kings game. I immediately knew this game was not going to have a lick of defense. It, it was the opposite of the type of game that I normally like, but since I like De'Aaron, Reese is the homie, and then Miles Bridges and Kelly Oubre are fun to watch, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for a game with no defense, and this was a game with no defense, y'all. Um, De'Aaron Fox was 8 for 8 from the free. You know what, let, actually, let's take, a, let's take a huge step back. My fault. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. The Martin brothers, <laughs> the Martin brothers, I made a tweet how they're climbing up the ranks of the best um, uh, brothers in the NBA. And when I tweeted that, people were giving me their rankings, and I forget there are so many brothers in the NBA. So maybe they like the, the ninth best duo of brothers in the NBA, which is still good. I mean, Caleb had, I think it was Caleb, had his career high against the Bucks the other night. And then today, Cody had his career high of 19. And so you had to play. Cody Marty gets it down low. He gets fouled and goes up in my mind. and everybody else's mind in the arena, it's an one. I need to see that last two-minute report because I don't know how you can say he wasn't in the art of shooting or the act of shooting. But regardless, they were in the bonus. He misses one of the free throws. He is the second. Boom. He was also a guy that was three for three at the free throw line before that. And there's a good three-point shoot, uh, free throw shooter, whatever. And then, right after I tweeted that this man and his brother are climbing up the ranks, this man does a take foul when they didn't have any more fouls to give. Blew the game. He sold the game at that point. And De'Aaron Fox, A for A from the free throw line. Now De'Aaron Fox is not a guy that's known to be a 90% three-point shooter, or free throw shooter. But at that point, he was A for eight. This season, he's shooting a career high 75% from free throw. So like he was already A for eight. These are just gonna be two easy ones, right? He missed the first. I'm like, okay, I guess that makes sense. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's not 90%. And then he misses the second. And he couldn't do nothing but smile at it, bro. They were handed this win, and De'Aaron missed the two free throws. Super unfortunate. Super unfortunate, De'Aaron. The Nets won against the Hawks. And I don't have much to say about this other than Kevin Durant is so fun to watch and great. Trey Young was great in this one. And then Kevin Durant got switched on to him, and they were like, you know what? Kevin, you guard Trey, and you get into his head. You hug him a little bit and whatever people do when they're mad at each other. But they show love after the game, so I guess they were mad. Um... 
com completely neutralized Trey Young for the last couple minutes of the game. Him. Uh, Kevin Durant and Nicholas Claxton playing great defense on Trey Young, and then you hit a couple big shots. I think it was even Kendrick Perkins that went on to Twitter and was like, hey, man, y'all not showing Kevin Durant enough love for Defensive Player of the Year. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't go that far. But he is a, a definitely a good defender at this point in his career, obviously, and he's still in his prime, which is crazy to say. Another player still in his prime, LeBron James, 33-6-5. There's a stat from Stat News. LeBron James has played 15 games a season. He has scored 30-plus points in almost half of them he turns 37 this week um yeah enjoy basketball y'all and, and and i know that lebron james has a lot of people that don't enjoy his game or don't like him as a person regardless he's 37 years old and he's still putting up great numbers and still fun to watch just enjoy it while you can if you want to hate him afterwards do that but just i mean it's great basketball at the end of the day i was so close to making a a hit piece on the lakers after yesterday's loss and i was waiting i'm like you know what if they lose to the thunder again i'm ready to go all in anti-Lakers narratives and stuff, but they won today, so we're going to have to hold out on that. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, people are going to take that way too serious. The Knicks lost to the Raptors, and it is the same old story every time you watch the Knicks. They start off a quarter terrible, and I even made a tweet how horrendous they were. At one point, it was like 30 to 10 in the first quarter, and then the second unit comes in and makes it a little bit better. Then they fall all the way back to this game, and at one point, they hit the lead, but then they get down the stretch, and they forget how to play basketball, and they can't get a rebound, and they lose a the game. Gary Trent, big old shots. Fred Van Vliet, double-double. Scotty Barnes with a, another double-double. This is what he do. 15 rebounds this time. Man, he realized it was 15. 12 and 15 from Scotty. But the Knicks are... Um, the Knicks should be looking to make moves. Is that weird to say? Alec Burks, didn't he realize he played 36 minutes, hit a free throw. One of them. The Knicks should definitely be looking to make some moves um, December 15th. There was even a report from Woj about a team or a group of teams that are looking at Ben Simmons and there might be a trade on the table immediately as December 15th when everybody's available to get traded. I'm not saying that the Knicks are the team or whatever, but the Knicks need to be making some moves because obviously this team doesn't have the same exact feel from last year that made everybody fall in love with them. And shout out to the to the Rockets, man. I legit thought that the Bucks would go in and kind of blow them boys out. And it wasn't a blowout. It took all of Giannis's powers. 41, 17, 5, 2 blocks, 3 steals, 5. Oh, my God. He was just incredible tonight. Um, It took all of his powers. And Chris Middleton hit a couple clutch shots to put away um the hottest team in the league. Gary Bird was still hitting the shots. You got Christian Wood playing solid. Sin going off the bench. Doing big man moves against Bobby Portis. But Giannis is a different beast, bro. Giannis is just a different beast. When he wants to score, there's not many people in the league that can stop him from doing that thing. I guess P.J. Tucker's on that list now because the other night against the Heat that Giannis struggled. But there's not many people that can stop Giannis when he wants to score. And he wanted to score a lot, especially in that fourth quarter. Then I saw that the Suns didn't have DeAndre Ayton. Of course, Devin Booker was still out. And I, I was not invested at all, so my apologies. And the other game I wasn't invested in was the Pistons versus the Pelicans. I'm sorry. I couldn't get myself to watch that game while the other games are going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I got a close game somewhere else of teams that I actually enjoy watching, I'm going to watch that over two teams that I don't necessarily enjoy watching. So my apologies. You know what I'm saying? 